my name is Gudrun from GE Designs and welcome to part one of the Amelie Supersized Quilt Along. Welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you for being with us and be ready to spend the day with us. Here, uh, we are live from Florida, but we have people with us from all over the world. We're so excited about this day. So make sure you keep commenting through all of our live sessions today because we do have some giveaways. Of course, if you are, not, that you are just stumbling onto our uh, broadcast today, make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube and follow our page on Facebook if you would like to be a part of such uh, quilty fun every week not a quilt along every week but quilty fun every week of course running the show with me today spending the day with us is mr hp running all the tech you may have seen some new cool things in the intro and like a little promo video for the show uh today i love it love it love it so thank you now i want a little bit uh talk about how today is gonna go we will be going live four times throughout the day this is our part one and then every two hours we will go live so i'll we will stay live for about 30 to 40 minutes because we want to give you time to get to sewing after each step of the way i'll be giving you instruction and um and then we'll take some live questions so if there are any questions comments anything like that so those four times will be and we're talking about central time uh, 10 a.m which is right now and then we'll be live at 12 two and four all standard times so make sure to have to have us ready at you know ready either on your device wh wherever you're watching now for this quilt along we have this is number seven of our full day quilt alongs wow seventh full day quilt along i think that's pretty amazing and it would be great to hear from you in the comments if you've been a part of previous one maybe you were even a part of our first ever one the Elvira way back in 2020. But uh, this one we are calling Supersized because it's kind of a perfect way to kick off a brand new year, 2023, let's supersize the year. And what does that mean? We're just gonna make it the best ever. Uh, quilting wise, any other way, we're gonna supersize it so we're gonna feel great and um, have a great time doing what we love. So what are the expectations of today? Now, those of you participating and sewing along, I hope you've gotten your pattern already. So that's available on the website. And so if you did, you have already gotten your cutting instructions and a cutting video about a week ago. So we did expect you to get most of that cut. If you didn't, no worries. You can just watch this segment go back to, uh, into your account on G Equal Designs and find the video for the cutting, get your cutting done and then catch up with us later on. So um, do you have that video for them to show where to find their pattern and their videos really quick? I think that'd be great. So if some of you are having trouble finding that, here's a little video um, and I'll talk you through it. So you go to our website, geequaldesigns.com. Up in the top left corner, you hit that login button type in your login and password and you get to your account. Then you find my downloadable files down in the corner and that will have all of your digital purchases listed. So find the Amelie supersized pattern, click on that. You will have, um, yeah, this is, I'm just showcasing two pages. Amelie supersized for me at the top, but you find your product and then you will have the PDFs that are connected to that product. And then the video player is below that. Um, the, the little thumbnails on the right are the different videos. So we'll be adding videos throughout the day as we uh, finish each part. So all you gotta do is click on a thumbnail, thumbnail and that brings up the video and hit play. So that's where you can go back and watch the videos right after the segment. So expectations also, let's take them down a little bit. You might not finish a whole quilt today, but that is okay. And I stylize these full day quilt alongs kind of like I would if I was teaching a class in person, a quilting class. What I always prefer my students to do in class is get through all of the steps of the pattern. So we are not necessarily making all of your blocks for a king size quilt from the start. 
we are going to maybe make a few, get them all done so that now you're really versed in all steps of the pattern so you have no problem going back and finishing the rest of your blocks whenever you've got time. But um, so I always recommend if you do have all your fabrics cut, great, that's awesome. And then when we start, you can kind of see how time is going between each step, do some chain piecing, but maybe focus on my, just half of your blocks or a quarter of your blocks. Now this particular pattern is really quick to make. So I can totally imagine uh, lots of you that are even making uh, smaller sizes are gonna get your quilt done all the way through if you're gonna sew today. And that's what's exciting. But let's focus on the learning. Let's focus on having some fun, enjoying this, this beautiful hobby that we all share and um, just have a lovely day quilting together. Added to that, we always include a few little extras. So I hope you have found our blog um, on our website. We have a blog post particularly for the quilt along and you have kind of the schedule there, all of the information for the quilt along. But also I uh, shared one of my go-to recipes. There's a beautiful recipe for a pumpkin chili and then two drink recipes. We are not gonna be drinking right away, but we're gonna to toast later on in the day. So if you wanna share in that, there is a non-alcoholic version and an alcoholic version. It's, it's my rum swizzle cocktail recipe. It kind of is fitting. Now it's a pretty chilly day here in Florida and I hear there are snowstorms in many parts of the North. So I think that's a perfect day to just spend it in your sewing room. So um, we have people from all over the world. And that's always the most exciting part for us to see where people are from and see how many are joining us because we have different time zones. So this particular format we're very excited about because this is the first time that we are able to put the instructional videos right away into your account so you can watch them again and again. Gives you more value to be able to find those easily. And um, we definitely saw a, a great deal of uptick in folks that we're not gonna be able to share them the day with us, but they were definitely gonna get ready because they could get to the videos later on. But we have people from uh, all over, like I said, and I wanted to just name a, uh, some countries. We have uh, folks from Australia, from seven territories, I believe, um, New South Wales, Australian Capital Territory, Queensland, South Australia, uh, Victoria and Western Australia. So this is my hello and welcome to all of you. And I'm gonna name more. So Canada, we have folks from Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario, Saskatchewan, Nova Scotia, Quebec, New Brunswick, Manitoba, and Newfoundland. So hello, we have Armed Forces Europe. Don't know exactly where you're located, but thank you for being with us. We have people from Denmark, uh, from France, Germany, Iceland, uh, Israel, Malaysia, New Zealand, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. So hi everybody over in uh, Europe and over across the oceans. And then of course we have lots of folks from the United States. We have all 50 states represented. I, lo I made sure to check them all and so you're all here. So hello, hello, welcome, welcome, and thank you all so much for being here. Before we kick it off, I always love seeing all of your fabric choices and I know you love seeing them too. And I thought it was great to put together just a short little slideshow with some of your fabric choices that you've shared because it's fun to see it in fabric. And then maybe later on in the day, later next week, we'll see those quilts come to life. So let's get some inspiration, turn up the music and um, check out everybody's fabric.
That was amazing. And this was just a small kind of a, a, you know, a snapshot because so many more of you have secured uh, yourself the pattern and are with us live today. So there's going to be over a thousand quilts, maybe over 2000 supersized Amelie's also different with all of their own characteristics. So I got some questions. Is it too late to join? Never too late to join in. So all you got to do is find yourself some fabric, half yards, and the pattern, the best way to do, to find everything you need is go to our blog, go to the website, find the blog, find the Amelie supersized quilt along blog post. And in there will be everything. One thing I forgot to mention, there is a link there to the playlist, the music playlist that Mr. HP has put together. He does this for every quilt along or every event. And this one is fabulous. There's all kinds of things. It's, it's so much better than listening to radio and one of those automatic things because you get such variety and uh, nostalgic things. Plus there are some some songs kind of pertaining to specifically what we're doing today. Put it, put it on random. Yeah, best ways to put on random so you're not getting a lot of the same in a row. Then you get really uh, all kinds of everything. I love it. And it's long, so you can be listening to this for probably weeks and, and not feel like you're hearing the same songs. All right, so I hope everybody's bellies are full and ready to go. Uh, we, of course, did our traditional quilt along breakfast. The stack and wax breakfast sandwich Yo was made. And, and uh, there it is for people wanting to know what's in it. We use uh, just egg, put it on a little thin bun with some vegan cheese and vegan uh, ham or deli slices. That red pepper jelly is crucial. Some sriracha mayo, or this was a garlic ranch, buffalo ranch, which I haven't found yet here down south, but we use a similar product. Tomato, avocado, and some spinach. It's delicious, delicious. And mm. it keeps you full for a while. So mm. it's good because we usually don't get much chance of eating until afterwards. So we'll hope that this will sustain us. Colby's ready. He's knocked out already. So that's his, his role for this day. But uh, as I said, we're going to kick it off now with the first instruction. This one is going to take you through step one and two of the pattern. So we'll play this pre-recorded video right after we play it. It's going to be in your account. But after we play it, I will kind of show you a few little tips and details afterwards here live and uh, get a chance. You have a chance to ask me any questions. And um, just if you were wondering, if I give you tips on top of what was pre-recorded, do you get to keep that too? Yes. So Mr. HP is going to gather every extra tip over if there were questions that are really kind of beneficial to have and own in the video later on. He's going to put together a little video with all these clips of bonus tips, bonus features, and we will be adding that to your account sometime next week once we get them from all of the four live sessions. So I hope you enjoy um, all of that work we put into it and are ready for a wonderful day. Is everybody ready? You ready? Ready. Yay. All right. So it's time to get it started with part one. So now let's get on to our part one of the pattern. We have all of our squares cut, our 14 inch squares. We're gonna just stack them up and you can decide how many you're comfortable cutting at the same time. I'm usually good with four, six, possibly eight, but we're just gonna do, I'm gonna do four here. So stack them up so they are, Nice and even. I'm gonna put them at a little bit of an angle because we're gonna be using the Stripology XL ruler. I like to use my ruler. We're just gonna cut these in half diagonal. I like the Stripology XL because look at all that space that has the grip underneath it. So it's gonna keep our triangles really in place uh, versus just a tiny strip of a ruler. So I'm just going to line this up corner to corner and then very carefully make my cut. 
this way and you want to do this to all of your squares so that you have triangles from all of them so now you're ready to start mixing up your colors and you want to take a triangle um, secondly you want to take your two and a half inch strips from the accent fabric and just go ahead and cut them on the fold so they are about 21 inches long or so and so we're going to sew this between two triangles and i like to sew one side first so i'm going to do that first i take my triangle fold it in half just make a crease to find the center and our 20 or our 20 two and a half inch strips that have been now cut in half 21 inch long about you can just fold them in half and find the center as well and we can center that right on the long side of the triangle so this strip is going to be oversized so whether you're exactly in the middle of the strip it really doesn't matter but here you want to put a few pins in to secure them and hold them let me find my pins I like to pin the middle and then one on each end so we're going to sew this strip on along the long side and in this case you want to make sure that the strip is on the top when you feed this through the machine because the triangles are the bias we want to use our bob rule what we call bob bias on the bottom because that's going to help keep this stable the strip is not biased but the triangle is so the strip on top is going to keep everything stable and the feed dogs are going to help with that so we sew this down and then once we're done i take this to my iron and you want to press towards the triangle so very carefully when i'm pressing i start by setting the seam and then folding my triangle out using my fingers as i press to make sure that my strip stays straight as i am pressing so once you have that pressed you want to add the other triangle to the other side so this one we want to obviously match it up with the other triangle so we're going to create another crease so we're going to take the triangle part and match them up we're not matching the strips because then your triangles are going to be offset so you, what you want to do is look at the diagonal edge of the triangle lay them together and then find your center by making this crease here uh, i want to do the same with my other triangle and then we just want to match up those creases pin it again in the three spots and again we're going to follow bob bias on the bottom and just stitch along this whole side once we have that done we are going to press again away from the accent fabric the center strip and so we have our square with the strip in the middle so making sure that everything is pressed away from that center strip the accent fabric and this is what you want to now continue on doing with all of your triangles you want to piece them mixing up the colors and just using your accent fabric in between and once you have that all done you're ready to move on to part two there it is first part um of course biggest thing to remember is bob <laughs> bias on the bottom so have that straight grain strip on the top some of you were wondering do you cut those apart um, because i said just cut them on the fold so if you have a strip have your two and a half inch strips that are full width i just grab my scissors and just snip them apart uh, on the fold because they are going to be plenty of long so some ways to save some time and let me let me give you one tip to begin with so that first step when we're 
cutting our big squares diagonally in half, I, we have to use the edge of a ruler. And as you probably know, if you follow my designs or patterns or quilt alongs in the past, I always, if I possibly can, have you cut through a slit on the Strabology ruler. And there's um, two reasons for it. Increases accuracy, but when we are up against the edge of a ruler and cutting things apart, there is that little chance that you go off and then you have ruined at least half of what you're cutting. So staying in the slit really helps us. Um, it's actually not gonna, not gonna mess up your pieces. So I have a tip on how you can uh, do that with the Strabology rulers, even though these squares are so long. So let me show you. So you can just take your squares. I have two here um, and I fold them in half corner to corner, so they're a triangle. So I would probably not do more than maybe four because as we are folding so many, then they start kind of shifting. But we have now created a fold down here. So then what I did, I took my ruler and I just put arrows on the 10 inch slit. So on the top and the bottom. 10 inch slit just because that's the middle of the ruler. So the rest of the ruler will hold your fabric in place. So then I find any horizontal line on the ruler and I wanna align that with the fold down here to make sure that that, that cut I'm gonna cut apart is gonna be parallel. If you don't do this, then your cut through the middle is gonna have an angle in it. So this is the most important thing. And then I wanna take that 10 inch slit and make sure that's aligned with the tip of the triangle. So we have any horizontal line on the bottom and we have the slit on the tip of the triangle and then we can just cut them apart right through that slit and this way there's no chance to ruin the triangles as you cut them apart um, they are ready to go this way all right so we're going to keep going with all of our units and piece them with that accent strip in the middle i had some questions about if this was really important to fold this in half and find the center on this part. Actually, it is not because once you figure out that this strip is about an inch, inch and a half, depending on your fabric, longer than the triangle, you can pretty much just start sewing with that sticking out on the end. And so I always have to give you the most kind of detailed instructions, but here are the time saving tricks. So you can skip that part and just sew it on. Just make sure that you set half of your triangles aside so you don't get lost in uh, sewing too many. So half of your triangles aside, sew it to one side and then pressing, that is the most important to press towards the triangles away from the strip. But then when it's time to add the second triangle on, then you really have to do the folding uh, like I showed before. Let me see if I have my step out piece here somewhere. Uh, somebody asked me if, what I was going to sew with and uh, you might have noticed that it's, it's this beautiful root fabric. So here's my piece that I have sewn this on. Let me move this out of the way. I fold, so as I'm pressing, I press this one, and before I leave my ironing board, I actually do the fold in half and just pop that iron on here. Then I get a really nice crease that is ready for when I sew the next one on. I can, at my sewing machine, just find the crease on the second one, find the center on the second one, and then easily match these up. And again, remember to have the strip part on the top, the bias on the bottom. Bob is going to be our best friend today. All right, so do we have any questions about this part before we move on? Okay. Uh, one, one question, have you found keeping the same pair patterns together makes it easier when putting the whole quilt together? Honestly, no, I, I am, I am the randomer. I, the, I say more variety will give you more options. Uh, it gets to be, if you try to put always the same two fabrics even, or same four fabrics together, you start to see a repetition throughout the quilt, and um, I really don't like that. So I try to be pretty random. So um, 
when the whole block comes together, I try to kind of mix the color so I have not the same two colors maybe next to each other. That's the only thing I try to avoid. So when you're putting these two together, so for example, if you're working with a colorway that may be just two colors um, or, you know, two really color families, then when you're putting the two together, I would actually put the same two colors, obviously different fabrics, because, um, no, I mean opposite colors. So I, even though it's um, same, so if you have, you know, yellow and blue, you would put one yellow triangle, one blue triangle. And then because that gets um, cut apart, you can switch the other side so you will never have uh, the two colors touching each other. So that's kind of the only rule if I was working with a really controlled colorway like that. Okay, what stitch length would you use? I use usually two and a half when I'm stitching. Any piecing, uh, two and a half is my go-to. Uh, do you recommend mixing light and dark? Mix, mix, mix. So if you try to plan too hard, um, it's not going to be successful. I got a question. So it kind of goes uh, with lights and darks. Uh, if you have just a few lights that are really going to stand out because they're lighter than everything else, or if you have darks that, you know, just a few that really will stand out, um, I try to just mix them in everywhere. And then when it comes to the layout is really where I try to disperse them around the quilt so they're not all congregated in one area. So that really makes a difference. Uh, another question, another question that I know I'm going to get is about uh, directional fabric. Directional fabric is really hard to control in this quilt if you have a lot of them. So just let go of that idea because the blocks are going to get turned every, every way. So then they're not directional anymore. However, if you have one or two directional fabrics and you really would like them to be the right way in the quilt, then you can to totally do that. So just try to avoid to put two directional fabrics into the same block. So don't sew two directional fabrics. Always sew just one directional and then other that doesn't matter. Because then you can start by placing those blocks um, the right way and then go forward after that. Okay. Can I use the square up ruler to cut the big squares? Um, you, so they are 14 inches. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the lines. You can make it work, but I didn't showcase that one because it really doesn't have the lines to be perfectly accurate. So, which is why I used my, um, my, my XL. You can, however, utilize your cutting mat if you want to use the squared. So the squared is 14 and a half edge to edge. So you would need a line through the center um, to be able to be accurate, which it doesn't have. Do you pair up all your fabrics before you start sewing? I normally don't. I start, I, I just start sewing. So I split my triangles in half and uh, that's easy to do. So you'll have, you know, kind of even split. And then I just start sewing. When I have about 10 left, then I start kind of figuring out and pairing up uh, things so they don't end up the same. But I usually start piecing and then pair up in the end. Two ways to do this. You can also pair everything up to be uh, in the beginning because those of you that want to be more organized, so it's easier to do it right away in the beginning than stressing in the end. Is it necessary to pin? No, <laughs> of course. So, um, <clears throat> do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> is uh, my answer on that one. I'm not a pinner, so I only pin when it's really crucial, so I always tell you that. So for this first step, there's no need to pin. Um, if you are seasoned and I'm not doing this for the first time. So if you feel like your bias edge of the triangles is pulling a little bit, then it's better to pin, but you don't have to. What rotary cutter design do you like best for the rulers? So this is such a personal thing because a lot of folks like the ergonomic. Me personally, I like the straight handle um, just because I can get the angle up so uh, that I can easily cut through the layers. My favorite is just the 60 millimeter um, straight handle. I, I, haven't found, <laughs> I haven't found the cutter that is perfect for the rulers, but I'm, hope, I, I'm hoping it will, will happen. The biggest thing for me is the blade needs to stick out. So the more the blade sticks out, the more area of blade that you have, the better. So 
Can you use the original ruler to cut the squares in half? The original ruler, yes, you can use the outside edge of the ruler and actually if you fold them like I just showed you, uh, that one is long enough to do that for sure. Okay, can, uh, can you use, that was the same question. <laughs> okay, are we getting there? Yeah. Getting there. All right, so um, if you have more questions, throw them out, but we're going to go off the air here. A last thing we're going to do, Mr. HP has been putting all the comments into a random generator, and we're pulling one giveaway winner every session. So who is our winner for part one? So this is all based on how much you uh, comment or ask questions in the comments. Oh, let's see. Here. Who is our winner? Okay, so any more questions? Where's I think I saw one. Where's my drum roll? Drum roll, please. Ready? Okay, Mary's asking, uh, does it matter which direction we fit the squares? X always left bottom corner to right upper corner. Oh, you cut them? It doesn't matter which, which direction you cut them. I just, because I am uh, right-handed, that's why I angled them this way and made the cut that way. But um, if you're left-handed, you can angle them the other way. Doesn't matter. Again, drum roll, please. <laughs> drum roll, please. <laughs> Sorry. Winner. There it is. Uh, Rebecca Immerfall. Congratulations, Rebecca. If you please can, send us an email to help at gequiltdesigns.com. We won't get to it until next week, but uh, that way you can claim your prize. Congrats, congrats. And so this concludes our part one. I know you're excited to get to sewing. I'm going to continue working on my little blocks here from the root fabric. So I will see you back here in a little less than an hour and a half for part two of the Amelie Supersize Quilt Along. See you soon. <laughs>